YouTube, Final Community, Zombies fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about the Zombies, 1968 album, Odyssey and Oracle, originally released on CBS Records in the UK and Date Records here in the US. The Zombies are one of the most influential and groundbreaking bands to come out of Britain in the 60s. Um, they're a mix of jazz and folk and R&B fused into this rock style. It is untouchable and instantly recognizable. When you hear She's Not There or Tell Her No on the radio, you know it's the zombies because no one else plays like that. No one has those breaks like that. And, and the timing and phrasing is so unique. It completely stands out from everything else on the radio. Truly an influential band. And, you know, it's good to see that they're kind of finally getting their due after, you know, years of maybe not being the highlight of some people's version of the 60s. Um... Whereas, you know, bands like the Stones and the Beatles and the Beach Boys definitely dominated that era. I think bands like the Zombies deserve just as much recognition as any of those bands did. Um, because I feel like they were just as unique and groundbreaking and influential. Um, such as is the case for this album, Odyssey and Oracle. You know, this album was the last album they put out with all the original members. And they broke up right after it came out. So, like, their existence as a band in the 60s was so short-lived, but you know, hindsight being what it is, it just, it looks like they had, like, a couple of cram-packed years of pop perfection, kind of like the Mamas and the Papas. They weren't around for that long, but, or, you know, like Cream or somebody. They just had a couple of years and created this body of work that has lasted so long and has been so influential. And, uh, I really feel that's the case with Odyssey and Oracle. This is one of those albums that I really feel is just pure pop perfection this album is really hard to top if you're into this kind of genre of music and um especially like if you're a musician trying to write something like this good luck because you're not going to do it like this is one of those magical moments in time that just worked everything was just there um the zombies didn't have a whole lot of money when they went in to record this album so they had a very short time to use and they rehearsed vigorously before even stepping foot into the studio. So by the time they got to the studio at EMI, where the Beatles were, by the time they got there, they just walked in, laid this thing down, and that was it. You know, and um, it's really, it didn't do much of anything at all when it came out. It was kind of unnoticed. And then Time of the Season came out as a single way after the album was released. And then that went to number one. And then, like, it just disappeared again. And then over the last probably 30 or 40 years, it's been this, like, slow-growing cult phenomenon. Um, I really recently saw an interview with Colin, and he said something like, this album sells more now than it did in 1968. And I would believe that. I mean, there's so many bands that have said that this is an influence and will always be an influence. So every new generation that discovers pop music and rock music from the 60s is going to be like, what's this all about? And they'll pick it up and fall in love with it absolutely mind-blowing album and it's it's one of my favorite albums ever for sure it's um apparently it's paul weller's favorite album and he'll buy copies of it for people still to this day just to give out because he loves it so much so let's just jump into it care of cell 44 is the first song on here it's a song about waiting for your sweetheart to return home from jail and it's just the the music that they use to convey in this song is so expressive and colorful and imaginative and um it's just got that instant classic feel. It just opens with this like bright little piano bit and then bounces into these really like springy type drums and then Colin's voice lazily layers on top of it and you're in for this treat, really. You're in for a ride of an amazing song. Um, the humming in the pre-chorus leads to this gigantic gang vocal harmonized chorus and it just blows your mind i vividly remember the first time i heard this song being like where have you been all my life like one of those moments where you're like holy crap like how do you write that how do you come up with that and then just pull it off like oh yeah it's just track one no big deal not like the last song you have to build up for like no this is the first song on the album like here you go <laughs> um a Rose for Emily is the second track, and this is a, a specific case of the coolness of the zombies, where the only instrument on this song is a piano. That's it. And everything else is just in the vocal melody, and then the vocal layerings and the harmonies. Truly something that is very difficult to pull off and still make it feel like a full song, and not just like a demo, like one guy banging away at a piano and a couple of guys singing on top of it. No, it sounds like a fully fleshed out song, and that's it. It's incredible. 
Maybe After He's Gone is another one of those songs. The first time I heard it, I was like, how do you do that? How do you write a song like that? It's, it's one of those songs that I feel like any pop group getting started today would lose sleep at night over trying to figure out how they did it and they try to figure out how to write something like that. But good luck because it's not going to happen. This is one of those things where like there's a magic in this album that cannot be replicated. Um, you might come close, but it's going to sound kind of forced because this came first. Um, you know, the, the middle eight of that song is classic zombies. It's got that classic early pop feel. Um, and this is definitely more one of the more sort of, I would say, like a mature pop song. Some other songs on this album are songs they probably could have come out with in 65 and 66, but this song feels like it deserves to be on this album for sure um, as an expansion, as a step up from what they would have been doing, you know, even just a few months or a year before. Beachwood Park is the next song on this album, and this song for me is really cool because I feel like the drums are the lead instrument. Um, they're definitely really up front in the mix, for me anyway, that's what I hear, they, they stand out for me. And Hugh's drumming is so colorful and charismatic and his fills are so imaginative that you feel like he's the leader of the pack and everyone else is playing the song behind him. And I kind of like that feeling, it's got a really cool vibe to it. Um, you know, some really good organs on this song and again, the vocals, the harmonies, that you cannot beat these guys for their cool vocal styles and arrangements. Very unique. Um, you know, they don't sound like anybody else. They don't sound like they're trying to be the Beatles and definitely not the Beach Boys. Like, each band had their own feeling and vibe, such as is the case for the Zombies. Unbelievable. Uh, Brief Candles is a very interesting song because it's got Rod's vocals on the first verse and then Chris doing his vocals on the second verse and Colin taking over the choruses. So it's cool to have a different blend of the other guys singing away. Um... And this song, for me, the bass in this song is very melodic during the chorus. It's bouncy, it's all over the place, and it kind of leads to that classic zombies feel at the end of the chorus. Um, again, a great track. Hung Up on a Dream. This song is so cool. Uh, I know, I keep using the word cool over and over again, but it's just a cool album. It's just a fun experience. You know, it's 35 minutes of candy. I mean, it's just a good album. <laughs> um... Yeah, Hung Up on a Dream has a really excellent use of imagery, and the music uh, really creates a dreamlike experience for a couple of minutes. Um, there's really wonderful breaks. There's a excellent lead guitar parts in this song. Um, and I love the line, you know, it gave me peace, it blew my mind, now I'm hung up on a dream. Like, it's just a really cool combination of words. Uh, it's probably the most psychedelic they got in this album, <laughs> saying blew my mind on it. Um, changes. This is a very peculiar song because it almost seems like each, each instrument on this song gets its own passage. Like the chorus has bongos, the verses have piano, and then in between that there's a little bit with like a woodwind or a string section. And that's it. Those instruments don't get to play with each other. But that's kind of what makes this song interesting. It's a very trippy, um, kind of like dabbling in the avant-garde kind of style, um, like a Baroque pop type of song. Definitely a really interesting track. Um, doesn't really follow the whole, like, you know, pop 4-4 four, four kind of head bopping material that you would expect from the earlier work. But I think that's what makes it really interesting to listen to. Um, changes indeed. I want her, she wants me. Here we go, back to the, the early zombies feel. You know, that, uh, um, that pop sound that they excel at so well. You know, when you hear a song like this, you think of She's Not There or Tell Her No or I Love You or, you know, I Want You Back Again. Um, it's definitely some of their cool B-sides. You know, you get this feel from that. And there's great breaks on this song. You know, the whole chorus with the, you know, She Told Me To Be Careful line. Like, really cool rhythm on that one. Um, great melodic bass throughout the entire song. Fantastic. Which brings us to This Will Be Our Year. And this song is one of those, like, every second of it is a true classic. It's one of those songs that comes on and you know you can't turn it off. You know it's just going to be the next two and a half minutes are going to be yours. And you're just going to revel in the fact that this song exists. And it's going to blow your mind because it's so good. Um, Colin's voice on this track, his vocals are untouchable. Um, and they're delicate, well-enunciated tenderness. They are so charismatic and beautiful 
and they just convey this feeling of warmth on top of this really beautiful uh, arrangement. It's a track for the ages. It's one of those songs that just like stands the test of time. It's um, an unbelievable song, and a lot of bands have covered it. And OK Go did a pretty good version of it recently. But um, whew, man, that's an unbelievable song. But then just like that, we bounce into the weirdness again with Butcher's Tale, which is a really cool, eerie song um, with this like really creepy pump organ that's like terrifying underneath this whole thing, especially the swelling that it creates during the chorus. And, you know, Chris's vocals on it are absolutely fantastic. He's got this like, his vocals have this feeling of like a dizziness, a, re a reality meets a surreal, uh, exasperating loss of emotions you know like kind of like a before and after like you've seen things that you cannot unsee in this tale of world war one you know my hands can't stop shaking my body can't stop shaking like i mean it's it's creepy but it's really cool because it's really well done and again another song where that's the only bloody instrument is this far out pump organ um yeah great track Friends of mine, you know, just like that, Snap, we're back into the pop groove again, and Friends of Mine comes on, and it's like, out of nowhere, we're back into Popville. Um, and great 60s pop. I could have seen this song come out way earlier. This could have been a, a song from them in 1965. No doubt. No problem. Um, and it's cool, because they list off a bunch of their friends at the end, so that's kind of a fun thing to hear. Which leads us to the last song on the album, Time of the Season. And what an unusual senses striking tour de force of jazz and rock this song is the mixture of coolness and the perfect use of empty space you know the bass and the drums kick in with that dun 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 ah. like what a weird timing what a weird phrase what a weird structure doesn't sound like anything else on the radio mind-blowing um you know you get this like uh <laughs> this feeling like colin's voice that's kind of like lilted in on a leaf, just like, or a feather, just like, boop, piling on top of the music now, and he's just like, got this coolness and this sensualness to his voice, and you're just like, you're in. Um, the the build-up to the chorus, again, you get this bright sunshine pop, multi-layered harmony, you know, it just sounds like a mission statement, it's the time of the season for loving, you're just like, yes, I believe every word you've said, this makes sense, I understand what you're saying, and then you get this crazy free jazz organ solo where the drums are beating the hell out of each other and like you're going crazy and the bass is popping what like how do you write something like that and then make it sound like it makes sense for radio um and again it's it's one of those songs where you can't copy it because it's so unique um it, it's like trying to make a replica of a right foot or something and it just, it's been done and you can't do it anymore because it already exists um one of those songs that it just kind of blows your mind and for me I've never gotten tired of that song and it's um something that to this day still makes me want to bob my head and tap my feet and snap along and um you know right up to the fade out you get lost in that mix right up to the very end and just like that the album's over and it's 35 minutes of absolute mind-blowing pop 60s perfection and I know I've said that a lot in this review, and obviously I'm going to give this album a 10 out of 10, but like, it, I just, it needs to be heard. More people need to be aware this album exists so they can have their mind blown with just really, really well-written music, well-crafted lyrics, well-executed production, and just by a band that had something to prove right before it broke up. Um, you know, the zombies in America, where I'm from, are known for three songs. She's not there, Tell Her No, and Time of the Season. And maybe in England it's different. I've, I, I've never lived there. I've never been there. So I'm not sure if you ask the common person on the street what your favorite zombie song is. But, you know, over here in America, no one knows this exists. It's one of those weird, like, oh, do you like the zombies? You should hear this. If you like those three songs, you'll dig this. Um, and for me, I remember hearing uh, This Will Be Our Year. I forget where I first heard it, but, uh, you know, it kind of like, it stuck in my head because I was like, that's a really unique song. But I didn't visit the album until, I don't know, only a handful of years ago. And it was one of those things where I'm like, man, if I had heard this, like, when I was in high school, this would have been, like, just a part of my DNA, like, my blood. Like, my approach to music would have been completely different had this been in my life way earlier. And I guess to a certain degree, it is now, just being in my life now. Um, 
So to say that, it doesn't really matter when you hear it, it just matters that you hear it. Um, the Zombies are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the recording of this album this year. They're currently doing a tour, and I wish I could go see them, but I, j I just can't. Um, timing in life just doesn't work out sometimes, but um, I hope to catch them at some other point. Wow. You know, they've put out this album as a live album a couple years ago. Um, when they did a tour, I think in 2008, they played a few shows and they realized how important this was to the audience and how much they loved it. And have since gone on to make a few more albums. And their last album, Still Got That Hunger, is really, really good. Um, I didn't know what to think going into it. I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. It blew me away. You know, these guys are in their early 70s and they still have something to prove. They still have the expression in them to get out and show that like they can still do it just as good as any of the new people and make music that sounds just as good as anything they did in the 60s and it really shows i mean that album is absolutely fantastic i really do like that and still got that hunger go listen to it go stream it go buy it check it out anyways that's a whole different review but um yeah, the zombies, Odyssey, and Oracle. Um, you know, yes, yes, it is misspelled. And uh, when they saw, <laughs> when the guy did the cover, Terry Quirk, when they saw the cover, they were like, "It's misspelled," you know. And so they kind of played it off after that, saying, "Oh yeah, it's done on purpose. It was a uh, kind of a done on purpose thing." And um, when Time of the Season came out as a single, it hit number one, and uh, it actually got the zombies to come back for a couple of songs. Did a, Imagine the Swan was one of the songs they did, um, but it was one of those short-lived things that didn't last long because at that point, Rod and Chris were doing Argent and um, kind of blowing up with the rock side of their musical expertise at that point. And, um, you know, so I'm glad the Zombies are back. I'm glad they are they got some different guys in the band now. They got um, Jim Rodford, who was with the Kings for a long time, and his son plays drums now. But then when they do the Odyssey and Oracle stuff, they bring out the remaining original guys, Chris and uh, Hugh, to come help out. And that's really special. So, to the Zombies... Continue making great music. You know, I'm glad you guys are out there still doing it and still proving that you are forced to be reckoned with and that you're not going to go down without a fight and that you still got that hunger and uh, you took us on this odd and oracle journey and I'm glad this album exists. 10 out of 10, all day, every day. My name is Giggins. This has been Odyssey and Oracle, an album review. And uh, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.